Plus 108 on both sides to get zero on one side. That's perfect. Omega 3t squared plus 108. Uh, do these two have anything in common that we can factor out? What do they have? Three. A three? Okay. So, um, because this term out in front is negative, I always suggest this, since this term in front is negative, then when you factor something out, factor out a negative. Okay, so yes, three, but let's factor out a negative three. What's 108 divided by negative 3? So negative 36. Okay. Uh, so when you factor out a negative 3, we get t squared and negative 36. t squared minus 36. That's a square. That's a square. That's subtraction. We can call it difference of squares. How does this difference of squares factor, Derek? Uh, you gotta do t minus six. Okay. And t plus six. You got it. Equals zero. And t equals six. Factoring negative. Layer three. I don't want to wait. I thought that too. That's t minus six equals zero. T plus six equals zero. Add six to both sides. Subtract six from both sides. There we have it. Here we go. What? Yeah. And I just didn't do that part. The last part? Yeah. That would be the solving part. Yeah, probably. I did not know one before that. No, I just didn't plus and plus. Ethan, what? Are you afraid of it's gonna come flying at your eyes in class? You never know. Like prescription. Sometimes you know. The prescription. <laughs> the prescription. <laughs> Uh, any questions about that? Any other questions? Yes? 19. Most people like to have the, the variables uh, with their powers in descending order, so we can go ahead and do that. <laughs> Certainly doesn't look like a difference of squares right now, but we haven't factored anything out. That's always the first rule. Factor something out if you can. Do they have in common? Do they have anything in common? Two. Two? Just two? Anything bigger? Probably. Four? Probably. Eight. Four? Do they have four in common? Eight. Eight in common? Yeah. Okay, we're two to four to eight. And like I said, this first term is negative, so let's factor out a negative, which is eight. Okay, negative eight times what? This is the negative 32y squared. Four. Four. Y to the second. Y to the second. Plus nine. Negative. Minus nine. Negative. Right, the negative times negative needs to come out positive. Okay, this is a square. Four is a square. Y is a square. Nine is a square. It's three squared. So, we can back to this for us real quick. Uh, 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2. Why? What? Uh, 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2y. And then 3 minus 2y. You're not looking at this. You're looking at your homework. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, yeah, it's just not the way around. So, it's so what? 2y plus 3. 2y plus 3? Yeah. And? And then uh, 2y minus 3. There you go. There you go, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Couldn't you do 3 plus 2y, though? Well, you could here. This would be, you could write this as 3 plus 2y, but you couldn't do this 3 minus 2y. 2y minus 3 is not the same thing. But if we distribute the negative in there, then, uh, or to distribute the negative in here, I suppose, we could do that.
Yes. X. Yes. Plus. Yes. Four. Yes. Parenthesis. Yes. Parenthesis. Yes. X. Minus. Four. Good. Good job. Good job. <laughs> We'd like to approach this one. Mm -hmm. Katie? Mm -hmm. Let's see. 5x plus 10. Yeah. Parenthesis. Uh, 5x minus 10. Let's see. Yeah. What if the kid's answer doesn't go with anything? Okay. Now, think about this one, though. We can do it a little bit differently, yeah? 5. X. Are you going to do 5x minus 10 and 5x plus 10? No, 5 on the outside. It would work. Probably. 5x? No. Five no. Parentheses. 5 parentheses. OK, sorry. I, I X. Plus 2. What are you doing? No. Maybe. Another one. X minus two. Yeah, see? Yeah, you did. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let's see if this works. <laughs> Let's multiply these together. X squared minus four. That's what this is going to multiply out to be. You get two X minus two X is yeah. going to be zero. And then That's five. Work. So we got five X squared minus 20. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to get 25 X squared minus 20. Okay, and you want Wait, what about if this was instead of five? A 25. Yeah. 25. 25x squared, 25 times 4 is 100. Can you do 5? 5x. It's just not all the way done. Okay. All the way done would be all the numbers factored out and the following will factor if possible. Okay. We can take out another 5. Bring a 5 out here. 5 plus five, 5 is 25. You got x squared minus uh, 4. This is a difference of squares. 25 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Almost so what Derek then, was telling us about. Then is this one wrong? Because like 25 parentheses x minus x. Is <laughs> Are you trying to use one? It should be x minus <laughs> x plus two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is also correct. It's just that this is a factor of five that we can factor out. And this is a factor of five that we can factor out. And when you factor out the two factors of five, they make 25. We have five times x plus two uh, times five times x minus two. And then we multiply it all together. And again, we get 25 times x plus two times x minus two. Okay, we're out of change. Uh, also an x. Okay, so that, that leaves us with what's our first term? X. Two. X squared. Yeah. Plus. Plus. Six. Six. X. X. Plus. Eight X. Eight X? No. No, it's eight. Eight. No, 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 uh, let's see, x squared plus 2x plus 4x, so 2x plus 4x is 6x. 4 times 2 is 8, yes. And now what? Well, and then you gotta do x equals negative 4. What? Let's take a half step back from what you just said. Come on. We gotta. Something times a something times a something equals zero, right? Zero. So if we multiply numbers together and we get zero, then what's the conclusion that we make? Some number is zero. One of these three numbers is zero. Yep. Set them equal to zero. That equals zero. 
that equals zero and that equals zero. Not all at the same time, but they're all possibilities. Yeah. Subtract four, subtract two, there you go. Well, you divide just zero over three. Divide by three, you get zero. Okay. Okay. So that one, I mean, it is a higher degree polynomial. It is, but it has more solutions. But all we had to do is factor out a common factor that made one part of it a quadratic. We factored that quadratic like we normally would. Uh, easy peasy. <laughs> okay. So, no problem. Let's factor out a common factor. Uh, that's always the thing that I tell you to do. The first thing when you factor a quadratic, look for something that they have in common all across the board, factor it out, and then see what you're left with. Maybe it'll be simpler. And, well, they're pretty nice to us in this book because we're just learning, and it does wind up to be pretty nice most of the time. It winds up being factorable. Thank you, book. Uh, this one, though, we've got to learn something new. Okay? So we'll come back to this one when we're ready. We're not ready yet. We need to learn some stuff. Okay, so let's back up. Let's put in a, we'll put in a page before that one. We'll go all the way back to the days when maybe we had 5x squared, let's make it 25x squared plus 5. And we wanted to factor it as much as we possibly can. That's what we're really doing in 9.8 is we're factoring everything as, possibly, as much as we possibly can, basically throwing the, the most complicated polynomials that you are now capable of factoring because you have all the skills. Okay, so what can we do about this as far as factoring? 5x. 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 
right? It, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a factor that's in common. It's just that, that factor is going to look different from this, from what you're used to. So you get a, a factor of x squared and a factor of x plus 1. That whole thing, that parentheses is an x plus, x plus 1. Uh, plus 2 also times x plus 1. You got a factor of 2, you got a factor of x plus 1. Now what factor do these two terms have in common? A factor of x plus 1. <laughs> Okay, so what are we saying is the common factor? One. One? Okay, they, well, everything has a common factor of one. Yeah. One. One x? <laughs> one x? No, just x. Yeah, just one x. Two? Three. Two. Three. Seven. Three. <laughs> okay, obviously we're just saying numbers and thinking it's, it's funny. I'm pretty sure it's zero. zero. Because there's a two, there's an x squared, and then there's a plus two. Well, they don't have to come in. Remember, a factor means you multiply. If we were to, were to say that zero is a factor, we're saying that zero times something else. X gives you two times x plus one. Oh. Zero. No, it's not a factor of x. This doesn't have a factor of x. This isn't multiplied by x. It's not x. It's not x. So they don't have anything. Hmm? They do. It's not a good thing. Plus one, x plus one. X plus one is the common factor. Just like here, seven is the common factor. And here, five is the common factor. Starting over. <coughs> here, x plus one is the common factor. We're going to factor out that common factor. Think back here. When we factor out the common factor of seven, we put parentheses here. We're going to be left with 2x squared plus 7. 2x squared plus 7. Here, when we factor out the x plus 1, what are we left with inside the parentheses when we factor out the x squared plus 1? 2x squared. <laughs> x squared plus 2. Yes. Yeah. x squared yeah. plus 2. Oh. Um, now that might seem strange, or maybe it just seems just fine. If it seems strange, let me try and help you out. Uh, we could we can multiply these together by taking x times x squared and x times two, one times x squared and one times two, just like we've always done. Or uh, we can use the distributive property like you always would if you had you know, two times x squared minus five. You distribute this thing that's outside the parentheses. We could do the same thing over here. It's only that the thing we're distributing is a set of parentheses. You distribute it to there. Yeah. That will give us x squared times x plus 1. Ooh. Distribute it to the 2. That's going to give us 2 times x plus 1. Okay. Okay. If you then distribute the x squared into x plus 1, you'll get x to the third plus x squared. And then you strip the 2, you get plus 2x, plus 2. If you want to yourself, you can multiply these together like you normally would, but you're still going to get x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 2. So then you just distribute the first parentheses and the <coughs> things in the second parentheses? We don't have to do that, but seeing it that way helps us understand what we just did to get from here to there. We just factored out the x plus 1 okay. like it was a full set of parentheses. It got distributed into x squared plus 2. Okay. And what we have here is it's, we're done. We're, we factored this. We factored out the common factor of x plus 1. And if you started with x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 2, uh, what we're going to learn today is how we would get from here to here to here and there by factor this thing right here. 
So if I just gave you x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 2 and said factor that, you probably wouldn't have very many ideas on how to approach that because it's very unlike uh, anything we've done before. It has four terms instead of three. We normally have three terms like x squared plus 2x plus uh, 1, whatever. Uh, here we have four terms, so we definitely have to learn something new. But the, the first part of the foundation is being able to see this parentheses as a common factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a similar thing up here where they have a common factor that's a little weird like that. It's a set of parentheses that's a common factor. And I'm going to come around and see if you can factor that out correctly. Um, we have 5 x squared. There's 2x minus 7 minus 4 times 2x minus 7. So, let me see what the common factor is and see can you factor it out, just like we did on the previous slide, factoring out 5 and factoring out 7, can you do it like this, we can factor out the x plus 1. Common, um, 2x minus 7, 2x minus 7 is the factor they have, common, right? What we're doing right now is we're, we're taking this 2x minus 7 out of the parentheses, like we're, we're reverse distributing it. Taking it out the parentheses. So what's left in here once we take out 2x minus 7 from both of them? 5x squared, five x squared minus, four. minus 4. Come on. That's exactly right. So the idea that we can treat a parentheses, the whole parentheses, as a factor, that's what we're trying to get at. That's what we're trying to learn and wrap our heads around. Okay? Let's see teeth behind the lips. <laughs> <laughs> Which means don't see teeth. Leave your teeth behind the lips <laughs> like they normally are. I'm excited to do that. It's getting old. Let's just participate. It's as right. I, I love to have fun. <laughs> have fun on the brakes. That's how we get things. Because I keep restarting it. You guys keep taking it. It's your own. All right. So we are almost oh. to the point where we can factor this, or solve this equation using factoring. We're, we're not quite there yet. So we have just like one more thing to go over here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start with a, a quadratic, then rewrite it so that we have those common parentheses factors, and then factor them out, and we'll be good. Um, let me show you how it's done. 5x third, 4x squared, and 5x minus 2. Let me try. Okay. So there's four terms there, not your usual three terms. You're going to do something real clever and rewrite it so that it looks like the last two problems I This is called factor by grouping, because the first thing we do is we take these four things, and we, this circling is not part of the thing you have to do. I'm just trying to draw your attention to, we have a group of two, and then we have another group of two. We group them together in two groups of two. That's why it's called factor by grouping. And in the first group, well, in both groups, we're going to do the same thing, but we start with the first group, and we say, does this group have anything in common between the two terms that are in that, that group? Do those two terms have anything in common? Five. Not, not that. These two terms in this one group. So, uh, x2. X. X. x squared. Yeah. We could factor an x squared out, and we're left with? Five x. Minus four. Minus four. Okay, so that's that group. Plus this other group. And this other group, is there anything that these two in this group have in common? Uh, I heard of five. So if we factor five out of here, what are we left with? Five minus four. What? No. Yeah, five x minus four. Five x minus four. Yeah. So look at that, 
just so happens that when we take those two groups and factor their common factors out, what we're left with are identical parentheses factors, or however you want to call that. So they both have a factor of 5x minus 4, so we'll take them outside of the parentheses. Take that out here. And what are we left with in here? It's factor. If we could factor this more, we would, but really the only time we could do that is if we had a difference of squares, which we don't have. Um, I'll give you one, a factor by grouping problem. two groups of two in each group, factor out the common factor, and you should get two common factors of parentheses. All right. So we start by, you don't have to circle. I would say do not put parentheses around these things, because parentheses has an implication in math that you're going to multiply these parentheses by something, or like something's going to happen mathematically with these parentheses. That's why I don't use parentheses for this. Could, but all you need to do is you can just do it mentally. I'm going to look at these two, and I'm going to look at these two. You can just cover them with your hand. You don't have to really do anything, but I would definitely not put parentheses around them. Group these together, and we look at the two groups separately. The first group, we ask ourselves, what do these two have in common? What did you say? A squared. A squared. Okay, when you factor out A squared, what do we have left? A plus 13. You got it. Okay, plus the next uh, group here. This group has what in common? Negative 5. Negative 5. A. A plus 13. Plus 13. Well, one question. Yes? So for the plus negative 5 part, what if you just did minus 5? Absolutely, yeah. You don't have to. Say. The thing that I don't want you to make the mistake of doing is multiplying these two groups together. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so I put the plus there to remind us, it's plus, it's minus, it's not times. Right? Okay. That's all I wanted to do. But yeah, it is, you could say minus 5. So we could just put a big minus sign. Minus 5 times a plus 13. So here is a term, and here is another term. Okay, what do those two have in common? A, a plus 13. That's plus right. 13. We take a plus 13 out. A right. squared. We're taking it out. Out. And what's left in here? A squared minus 5. Good. Take a few minutes. I'm just going to give you this one right on to do yourself. Ooh. Try another one. Okay. So, save it for individual work. Alright, group them together. Two groups of two. In the first group, they have x squared in common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. X plus four is left. Second group? 25. Negative 25. Negative 25. Uh -huh. Remember, it's minus 25, not times negative 25, right? Between here and here. Minus 25. And then what's inside here then? X plus 4. X plus 4. It's plus 4. It's negative 25 times. X is negative 25 X. Negative 25 times 4 is negative 100. Draw the parentheses because, I don't know, I, I think it kind of helps to see. We are, hold on just one second. Those are the common factors. Question? Yes. So yes, I did minus 5, and instead of 20, I did 5x minus 20. You can't do that. No, either. you can. And I did in the end, like I did x plus 4 and then x squared minus 25. You can't even do that. Well, if you do that, so you got what you have is x squared times x plus 4 plus 5? Uh, minus 5. Minus five. <coughs> You took out a negative 5 instead of a negative 25, mm -hmm. which would give you a uh, 5x plus, plus four. it should be plus. Yep. Now this you can't do anything with because they don't have a common factor yet. Okay. They, like these parentheses would have to be identical, they're not. Okay. 
but you could take out another five, mm -hmm. right? Another five. That five would multiply by that five and give us the same thing as over here. We get x squared times x plus four minus 25 times x plus four. Okay. Now you have identical factors. Okay, so we have those identical factors. We're gonna take them out of the parentheses. Okay, we're gonna put, put x plus four out here. So we got x plus four times what's left inside here? x squared minus 25. Okay. And now, what is this thing? You can go That's right, you got a difference of squares that happens to come out there. So you can factor that difference of squares. solve an equation that you're, that, you know, a polynomial equation is make sure that one side is zero. Done. It is zero. Okay. What do you do after you make sure so one side is zero? Group them. Group them. Factor. 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 Yeah, factor is, is the, the big broad term factor. To factor this one, we're going to group. We're going to factor the, the, uh, the like terms, or the uh, common factors out of each group. So it's just like the problem we got done doing a second ago, okay? So why don't you go ahead and do that, so essentially factor this. You're going to have a factor that's going to be equal to zero. And then you take it from there if you know how, and if you don't, then I'll come around and get all these. All right. So we're going to factor, we're going to group these, group these two, x squared. x squared yep. times x plus two. Yeah. Minus nine. Minus nine. X plus two. Times X plus two. So if you distribute it negative nine, negative nine X. X plus negative two. eighteen. Okay? X plus two. Uh-huh. X squared minus nine. Uh-huh. There you go. Good. Good factoring so far. Can we factor this more? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. X That's plus two. X plus three. three. I mean three. three. X minus three. X minus three. There's X plus two. Right. Chill, chill out. Now what? We've got thing times thing times other thing equals zero. So now, what do we do next? You get to zero. X equals negative two. Except x plus two equals to zero. X plus three equals to zero. X minus three equals to zero. Yeah. Okay. X equals negative two. X equals negative three, X equals three. Go ahead. Yep. So now we're gonna put it all together to be able to just give you an equation. You should be able to factor one side of it, as long as one side is equal to zero, which already is. Alright. Factor it, so each factor equals to zero, solve each little mini equation. Okay. First, we factor out the biggest common factor of all three. What is that? Five. 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 And. 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 Okay, what does that leave in here? N squared. N squared. N squared. Yeah. Minus six N. N. Six X. Plus eight. <laughs> okay. Equal zero. Equal zero. Yep. Now what? Well, you factor that. Too. Factor what? That. That. This? Yeah. yeah. This is a quadratic. Just it's factorable, just like. Five N. What? Five N first. Yeah. Yeah, five N. And you have to do um, n. n. Minus 2, I heard. And then n minus 1. There we go. Plus 2, 0. 6. <laughs> okay, we got first thing times second thing times third, times third thing equals 0. So we set first thing equals 0, second thing equals 0, third thing equals 0. 5n equals 0. n minus 2 equals 0. n minus 4 equals 0. <laughs> 
and solve for n. Divide by 5. Add 2. Add 4. Solve it. Good job, period of age. Uh, we have two minutes left, and they are yours. That's pretty easy. That's pretty easy.